for the next part, we'll be looking at doing the wiring for the connectors for the scales. I got these Detron scales from AliExpress. This is the y-axis going on a Bridgeport mill. So this is uh, about 16 inches, 12 inches uh, long. They'll cut them to whatever size you need. And that's the scale. And this is the reed head right here. Um, something nice about the Ditrons, they have a little LED that will indicate whether they're connected, whether it's seeing the, the magnetic tape. And on the far end, unsurprisingly, is a DB9 connector. I'll put this aside. Now, the tricky part is, or potentially tricky part, is figuring out what connector is what as it needs to go to touch the, the touch DRO board. If you're lucky, your scales came with some sort of documentation like this, which has the pinout of the DB9 connector here. So what touch DRO needs is 5 volt, plus 5 volt, the ground, or 0 volt as they call it here, A and B. Uh, optionally, you can have A minus and B minus, which are the differential. I'm not sure exactly what that does, but they're optional. So if your scale doesn't have A minus and B minus or A prime and B prime, that's totally fine. You just need A and B. And this gives the pin numbers and the diagram for the connector. Now, it's important to note that the connector diagram is looking at it head on. So pin one is this upper left pin in the connector. When you get the DB9 connector out of the hardware pack for touch DRO, you can get a little confused, but you can also just plug it in like that and note that this is will be pin one according to your diagram. Remember, go by your diagram. There's a um, page on Yuri's site that describes how to find the pinouts if you don't have any documentation. Hopefully you can avoid that, but I will uh, link to that. Also on this, they are numbered. Very, you probably cannot see them on the camera, but they are little tiny numbers there. So number one is the uh, upper right in this case, but again, you can plug it in like that and then you'll know how to do it. On the other end, of this connector will be one of these header connectors. Let me uh, move that out of the way and bring out the board. So these header connectors will connect connect to the touch DRO board. And the board is pretty well labeled. Uh, not to bend those pins. And you can see the the ports that touch DRO is going to be using 5 volt A B ground or zero volt, and then A prime, B prime. I'm not sure if there's a right way for this to go on, but I chose to use that tab towards the inside. I figured it wouldn't interfere with anything like that. So that's how I'm going to assemble them. Now there are these little leads that come with, which you'll need, well, depending on if you have A prime and B prime, you'll need either four or six per axis. So I do have A prime and B prime. And this, you notice there's two ends. There's the gold and tinned end. The gold end will go to the DB9 connector, which I lost. We'll go there and the tinned end goes to this header connector. The way I decided to do this is hook everything up to the header connector first. And then I did some testing and I'll show you what I did in a minute. But for the hookup, if you notice there's a tab there hard to see everything. There's a little tab on the uh, on the connector, the tinned end of the connector, and there's little holes that that locks into. You also notice there's a thinner, thinner holes and wider holes. The thinner holes are what goes down towards the pins. So it will go on like that, except on the right connector. So this will go in from the wider end. So since I'm hooking it up with this tab going in, I know there's the four on the far side and then the two right above the tab. So I can go ahead and just put these in and they go in, I find they go in fine just with finger pressure and you'll feel a snap and hear a snap. So you can just repeat this with all of them, well with the ones you need. 
which will be the four on this far side and maybe the two on the inner side if you're using the A primes and B prime. Just make sure those tabs line up, otherwise they won't lock in. And when you push it on the connector, it might just push the connector out. Line that tab up. This is a point where you want to take your time, especially when you get to the point of actually connecting it to the DB9 connectors, because it's very difficult to get these out. I'm, I know the DB9s, supposedly DB9, yes. You need a special tool. These I think you could get out with a tiny screwdriver, but it's not fun. Oop, that rotated on me. You can also use um, a pair of pliers. Just grab this ferrule in the back and push in with a pair of pliers. But like I said, I found that worked just fine. All right, so now I've got the pigtails all connected to this, and you'll see how that goes on there. Now what I did as a test, because I'm a little bit of a scary cat and I didn't want to mess things up, is I took these little connectors and I just connected them to the, according to my, my diagram, the connectors on the DB9, you'll see they just slide right on. And they'll hold there and they, will not short once you get them on, although do this connection without any power applied. Um, I'm just putting them on here just for demonstration, not getting the order right, but do make sure you get the order right. And then once I had them all on according to the diagram, I just hooked power to this, to the touch DRO board and turned on my tablet with the app installed and I was able to just move the scale around and see that it responded correctly. And then, so that was a test just to make sure I had the pinouts all correct. It's up to you whether you want to do that. You do want to be careful not to short anything. So it's at your own risk. I'll take these all out. Now, next we can go and get our diagram out. Let's see, I can put this up on here. And I like to go pick one side. So this is it's going to be, again, just double check. So this is going to be across the bottom. We'll go across the bottom first. And we know we know we need seven, two, six, one, eight, three. So four, five, and nine are going to be empty. That's the whole right side. So we'll go eight, number eight, which is B. So you find on your connector B here, and you can do this. It doesn't have to be plugged into the board, but I like that just to give me the labels. And just make sure that's B and B, double check again. Oh my gosh, make sure nothing flips over. B will go to eight. So you push that in, double check before you click it in. B goes to eight, B goes to eight, all good. So you can that snaps in. Then seven. Seven gets the plus five volt. So string out the plus five volt, which is right there. And seven goes there. Again, double check. Seven, seven, plus five volt, plus five volt. And you just repeat that for the rest of the connectors. You don't need to watch me do it all. Okay. These are my two connectors. I only have, uh, I'm only doing two of the axes for right now, so I just made up two of these connectors. Um, you could make them all up, but unless you definitely know what scales you're gonna get, you should probably wait to do this until you actually have the scales in hand so you know the proper wiring. So that's why I'm only doing two. I will put the blank connectors in there. So now we can actually start putting everything together. Okay. I'm going to get this board in there. This is to try this several times to get everything lined up. We have these nuts which should drop in. And then these screws, which I it's a three millimeter hex. I'm going to grab it with some tweezers and hopefully be able to get them in there. 
still close. Looks like everything wants to jump out. Started and then on to the second one. Came out underneath. Now that one's in, it at least holds the board in place, so that makes it quite a bit easier. All right. Now let me drop through and then snug them both up. Now, you don't want to put a lot of torque on these. Just snug it. So it's going not to move, going to not move. Um, Loctite might be a good idea. I'm not doing that right now, but that would certainly keep them from moving. Make sure all the ports are good. All right. All right, going to install our DB9 connectors. And you see they're cut a certain way to fit and you've got the nuts to go underneath the smaller of the two and these standoffs or I guess they're not really standoffs but connectors for the, the ends. This is probably this is also going to be tricky. Get that bottom nut in there. Hopefully that will stay long enough. And trying to, sorry, trying to stay in the frame. And that'll thread through there. And then just see if we can do this, hold it all together. And get that bottom one started. And of course this is not gonna go well. I got my big fat fingers in the way. <laughs> Gotta plan where they go. Just trying to get that to start, which is not gonna go well. Actually, I can probably do. This is one of those three-handed situations, or maybe four or five hands, but trying to hold the nut with the tweezers just jammed in there. Once it gets started, it'll be good to go. There we go. All right, that one's in. And the top should be significantly easier since it's not down in the pit down there. Right. And you can probably just, again, we don't need a, a whole lot of torque on these, just enough to keep them snug and from loosening up. Now this is, we'll double check our plate. This is the X, so we'll go ahead and plug this header into the X connector. All right. Now, as I said before, I'm going to put the blanks in, just mostly so they don't get lost. And it'll keep dust and chips and stuff from finding their way in the, in the container, in the enclosure here.
All right, check my connections. Y to Y, X to X, lugs facing the right way. And that should be it for inside the enclosure. So I can go ahead and put the cover on. It will fit. There we go, snaps in. I don't even really need the screws. They're just the Phillips. And they're just um, self-tapping self -tapping screws. So they're just digging into the plastic, those little plastic lugs that we installed. So again, don't get aggressive with the torque. You're just holding the cover on. All right, and I think that is it. Now we have a fully assembled two axis setup touch DRO board and enclosure. Looks pretty good. A little bit of uh, glue smudging and stuff, but like I said, it will be on the back of the mill. All right. All right, now that everything's assembled, before getting involved in the actual installation on the mill, probably be a good idea to test things out. So I had to, here's the uh, end of the reed head of the scale. I only have one handy right now, so I will just plug that into the X. I have, let's see if I can arrange this, I have just an Amazon Fire tablet. Ooh, ring light's making a mess there, but you can see the numbers. With Touch DRO installed, and I'm trying to fit everything. Here this, and here's our scale and our reed head. So those are connected, and I will just plug USB power into Touch the Touch DRO, and you'll see you get some nice a green power light and a blue. I don't know if it's a Bluetooth traffic light or whatever. And we can connect on the tablet. And here's this nice feature of the Ditrons. You get a red LED indicating that it has power, but it's not seeing the scale. But if I get, see, as soon as I got close to the scale, it turned green. And as I move it across, we are getting movement. Now, nothing's calibrated here, so the... Uh, the distance may not be accurate. We have to do the calibration. I'll do that after it's actually installed, though. But now we see the x-axis is moving with the reed head. And the way these Ditrons work is the reed head is totally disconnected from the scale. And you just mount them so they're in proximity, which gives you a little bit of flexibility. Also notice the reed head's almost half the size of the space in the scale. So you've got a lot of wiggle room there to get it right and uh, make it fit in your situation. But we do see the scale is moving. And if I, let's pull power. I'm not sure if Touch DRO likes changing the scale while it's plugged in. So I just pulled the power there and then plugged into the Y axis just to make sure they're both working. And power that up again. Reconnect. See again, we've got the red, red light. And hopefully now the Y will move. Hey, look at that. So now we've got the Y moving back and forth. So everything seems to have been done correctly, which is always a surprise. But that is a successful build and a successful test. So next we'll move on to getting this all mounted onto the mill, which will be its own set of challenges.